that's why now Russian propaganda very often uh, try to quote uh, Old Testament about Israel wars, go to fight them, go to kill them, take their land, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Old Testament. They forgot New Testament because it's not common for, for them now. Moikka moi ja tervetuloa Kujalla-podcastiin. Tänään keskustellaan Venäjästä ja venäläisistä kristityistä. Mitä he ajattelevat sodasta? Vieraana minulla on tänään Konstantin, joka on lähtenyt Venäjältä pois, koska hän ei halunnut joutua rintamalle. Okei, okay, welcome Konstantin. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Moi. <laughs> moi, very good. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Hello, Heidi. Yeah, hi. So um, you have left Russia because uh, you basically don't want to be in the war. Um, what is the kind of the general view of Protestant Christians in Russia about the war? So first of all, uh, I'm sorry for my English, uh, maybe not correct uh, phrases and words, but I will try. I'll do my best. <laughs> hopefully so the talking about protestant church uh, so first of all you need to understand what protestant churches uh became a full-fledged part of society only in the early 80s i mean maybe yeah 90s 90s so uh that means uh only like 40 years Protestant churches uh, re uh, has a, their presence in Russia, like evangelism, uh, worship, uh, planting the church, and so on. And But most of them based on Baptist churches, which uh, were created like 200 years ago. And that was a Baptist church. And they go through the Soviet time. So that's uh, lots of punishment, lots of uh, jail for their faith and so on. And now uh, churches uh, in this situation are uh, divided. So congregation can split who's uh, for the war and who against the war. That um, should be like priests or pastors or like, church members. So uh, And that's a really strange situation. So you can find the church, then they uh, doesn't talk about that, doesn't talk about war. That's that's just nothing exists. So that's no war. Stop talking about that in church. Or you can find a church where there's a lot of people for the war. So the people who against the war, they leave the church and find the church they against the war and same opposite situation in a church where the people against the war. So that's what's going on right now in the uh, Protestant church. But also the second problem is uh, look uh, for, uh, for the leaders of the Protestant church who very close to state, I mean government, uh, they not uh, say spoke out against the war. So, because if you were uh, talking against the war, you're going to jail. That's easy. Okay, so many different views within the Protestant church about the, about the war. And as a result, the churches are a little bit divided, it sounds like. Uh, you either kind of don't talk about the war at all because you don't want to be divided in the congregation, Or if you do talk about the war, then some people leave altogether. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I think in the news, at least here in Finland, we hear a lot about how the Orthodox Christians and um, and Kirill, what's his title again, Archbishop something, uh, is very much in favor of the war. So is that the situation with the Orthodox Christians in general, that they are in you know, supporting the war? 
Uh, that's not true. So I, I don't know how we call uh, like Russian Orthodox because uh, Greek Orthodox is a different church. That's not Russian Orthodox. So that's uh, Armenian Orthodox. That's not Russian Orthodox. So if I just call Orthodox, I'm talking about Russian Orthodox Church. Okay. So they also have a division between priests as well as uh, church members. But but you have to look what uh, main priest says. I just uh, quote starts. If someone driven by a sense of duty, uh, they need to fulfill the oath, remaining true to his calling and dies in the line of military duty. Then he undoubtedly uh, commits an act tantamount to sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for others, and therefore we believe what this sacrifice washed away all the sins what a person has committed. What ends? So, if you're not agree, you have to leave Orthodox Church. If you agree, you suffer the war, and your uh, theology based on that. Mm. Okay. So, uh, if you're Orthodox and you're not agree, that's a problem. But Orthodox also divided. But main thing is, um, so we have a Russia as a huge, huge country, and uh, few uh, cities, uh, more than a million people, and that big city is more liberal than another Russia. And if you and if you're talking about that huge cities, uh, Christians, Orthodox, divided. If you're talking about Russia, the small cities, small villages, and uh, that things, uh, they almost the, almost all of them support uh, Orthodox priest position. Mm, mm. That's the main difference: yeah. big cities and the small cities. So basically, the official Orthodox Church uh, view is that if you die in the war, you are, you know, making a, a, a sacrifice, and it's a it's a good good thing. It's a it's a worthy cause uh, to be involved in. Um, but do any of the well, none of the Protestant churches, perhaps, are as, you know, excited. <laughs> the ones who are supporting the war, they're not as, as, um, you know, uh, as excited about the war. Are they? Yeah, but you have to understand what, according to the Russian law, um, the re all religions are equal before the law and separated from state. But that's not a true. In Russia, uh, it depends of uh, dominate, dominate religion in the region, like Orthodox, uh, Buddhist, Muslim. So they like uh, interviewing with the state. And if you go against state, you will lose the money. So, but the Protestant churches don't get money from the church. I mean, sorry, the Protestant churches don't get money from the government. Not a straight money. Maybe like... Uh you will pay less for electricity or uh, you have permission to buy that building for a uh, uh, church or like that. Not, not, not a straight uh, money mm -hmm. because you have to, you have to understand that in Russia, it's only three, uh, like it's not correct to say, but you have to understand only three uh, religions like Orthodox, uh, Muslim and Buddhism. That's it. Protestant, it's uh, generally, <laughs> uh, it's like a cult. So less often, uh, attitudes to Protestants is patient. At the state level, it's patient. In Orthodox or other religions, it's a cult. Uh, how they cooperate? Mm, uh, very less. Protestant 
very less cooperate. That's other, uh, both ways, uh, with the Orthodox, even Muslims, and etc. Well, here in the West, of course, uh, everyone is very critical of the current war uh, between Russia and, and Ukraine. Um, why are people or the Christians in Russia the ones who are supporting the war? Why do you think they are supporting the war? Um, then I was 18, I was drafted to the army. I served for two years and I was, uh, that was, I must go to army, but I was uh, too, uh, <laughs> too small with the weight <laughs> and really tall for that. So I, and I go to the officer who said, I want to go. And he said, you're not healthy. I said, I want to go. And I was drafted. So, uh, and I was a patriot. I was a Christian. And the same time, Petra. Uh, that was the second Chechen war. My friend uh, from my, uh, okay, my friend died there. Uh, second, my friend uh, was a part of that war and he survived. And the uh, same time, I uh, go to serve an army. And I want, wanted to fight too. I was a patriot. And until 2018, picture of Putin was on my wall. Until the uh, Georgian war, I start to understand something wrong. And the problem with the Russian, that's, uh, did, did, uh, this, okay, I, I don't call, uh, I don't know how you name, uh, how name it. That's uh, imperial disease. So Russian think they are still empire. They were empire with the Tsars. They were empire with the Soviet Union, and they think they still imp empire because lots of people live back there. They want to come back Soviet Union. Even Putin, he said uh, what. Uh, Divided the Soviet Union was a huge catastrophe of the 20th century, and all of them want to back, uh, want to take it back. So and from and I was a part of that, and from that uh, huge mountain of imperialism, and you just see for all of that countries, and they uh, owe us all that 15 ex republics. Owe us. We bring them uh, culture. We bring them uh, language, uh, uh, science, and so on. They owe us. But nobody wants to understand what time has changed. And just, just imagine you're a forty years old man. Work, work like twenty years for uh, KGB, and you became the president. What you will do, you will uh, do the same thing where you, wh when you grew up, you try to come back Soviet Union with all of that things, because they, then you young, that's the best time. Just remain, remember your youth. And you think, no, no even, even in Russia in the 19th, that don't have, you don't have food or drink or meat or something else. You still think that's the best time because you was young. As the propaganda say, we not, Russians don't fight with the Ukrainians. Uh, Russians fight against uh, Nazi who think they're Ukrainians. Because Ukrainians love Russians. Because uh, Russians and Ukrainians are brothers. But who don't think like that, they are Nazi and has to die. Okay. So basically, it's, uh, yeah, so basically the Russian view is that, uh, you, yeah, the Ukrainians and Russians are like brothers, they love each other. And if there are Ukrainians who don't love Russians, then they are not true Ukrainians, they're Nazis and they have to. Have to die, and you poison, poison it like uh, of Nazi views, and that's it. Mm, mm. So that's yeah, okay. Well, um, so what do you think about the? You mentioned propaganda. What do you think about the propaganda? What is the propaganda about this war in Russia like? 
Uh, first of all, we have to understand what what is it propaganda. <laughs> uh, the first problem is um, people for state or state for people. Propaganda and patriotism, it's a uh, patriotism, it's a uh, two friends who walk together. And if you patriot, you love your country and you will die for your country because you're a patriot, right? That's what, what propaganda wants. They want to you to give everything for a country, everything. But in clear mind, you will take your time, uh, sorry, you will give your time, give your part of the body, you will give your life for what? For a medal, for a piece of paper, for a fur, for what? <laughs> And uh, propaganda works very well in Russia, very well. On TV, TV it's like a hundred percent of propaganda. Everyone likes Russian TV in Russia, but if you turn off TV and you'll not watch TV maybe a week, your mind will be more criticized. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically that it's uh, patriotic propaganda, you know, supporting Russia and so on, and it's um, it's on, on TV all the time. Um, well, so, sorry, can, yeah. can I add yes, for yes. that? So propaganda it based uh, on, a, how to say, opposite to Europe. In Europe are liberals, and we have our own tradition values in Russia, like uh, no gay marriage, yeah, no sexual prevention of children, animals, etc. I'm serious. They're talking about that on TV. But look what they do. They talk a lot, but look what they do. In Russia, uh, every year uh, dedicated to something like dedicated to education, dedicated to science, dedicated to marriage. In the year which was dedicated to marriage, president of Russia get divorced. Words and deeds. So you have left Russia because you have a different conviction about the war. So what is your personal conviction? First of all, uh, war is evil. <laughs> uh, war is evil. Uh, I don't want to be a part of that evil. Because I'm a believer uh, and believe in Jesus Christ. And uh, remember what Jesus uh talking about. He, <laughs> you know, in... <laughs> That words remind me of what Paul said in uh, Corinthians. Imitate me is as I am Christ. Who's the most important authority for Christians? For me, that's Jesus. Just listen what Jesus said. It seems what everyone uh, has forgotten a uh, sermon on the, on the mount. Love each other. Yeah, love God, because God is love. God is not a force. He is, but in love. Je Je Jesus uh, doesn't teach uh, faith through the force. He teach faith through the love. I don't see any love by killing people. That's not correct. And we are Christians of forgot, I think, like we forgot one main thing. 
who we are. We are not Russians. We are not Finnish. We are not Ukrainians. We are Christians. We have our own president as Jesus Christ. We have our own kingdom, kingdom of God. And we have to share love, not death. That's why I leave Russia, because uh, the uh, Russian government uh, welcomed me to that war and uh, wished to part of that evil. Mm -hmm. My my God doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't agree with war, but uh, what is your kind of general view about war? Do you think it's always wrong for Christians to participate in war, or do you think it's sometimes okay? What is your view on this? Christians are not pacifists. Because... <laughs> That's a different meaning. That's just a different meaning. As I told before, my president, Jesus, my kingdom of God, and we Christians own a war. But Christians fight not uh, against flesh and blood. Christians fight in spiritual war. That's completely different. <laughs> if, if, if you see the war with the, like, uh, uh, two kings, yeah, beside you, and someone welcome you to that war. That's not Christian war. That's why now Russian propaganda very often uh, try to, uh, how you call it, uh, quote uh, Old Testament about Israel wars, Go to fight them, go to kill them, take their land, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Old Testament. They forgot New Testament but because it's not common for, for them now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a pacifist, but in my world. <laughs> mm. So what is what do you think is then for a Christian? Like, is it then in some situation it's okay to fight for your country or what do you think uh, i have a talk with a ukrainian lady in a bible small group in finland and i was there um and she said our christians ukrainian christians go to the war to as a medic to help people and uh, I asked her, so should I go to that war like a Russian medic to help people, to heal that people who will kill your people? No, I'm not a part of that. I'm not a part of that. Uh, I saw the Baptist guys in Ukraine, that was a video, they pray before uh, battle. Uh, I don't want to judge them. That's uh, their attitudes between God and between them. But I'm clearly understand God said, do not kill. Jesus killed no one. No one. In a one, just, okay. Uh, if Christ wanted, uh, he would have called legions of angels in one second, in one second. And they would have shown everyone how to love and obey Christ <laughs> in one second. But no, Jesus didn't teach to, to plan, plan fate by force, as I said before, only through the love and personal example. So if you see the war, just go away. Just go away. That, that, okay, that's not your country. This is not your country. Your country is a kingdom of God. You're, you, 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 you're a stranger here. We are Christian strangers here. Don't forget about that. Don't forget. You will die one day. Everyone will die one day. And 
then you became become after. That's the point. So you have left Russia uh, to look for work and to look for new opportunities outside of Russia. How is that going? Are you finding anything or what is your situation like? Um, I'm, I have a family, a wife and uh, three kids, uh, 13, 8 and 5 years old. They still in St. Pete. And uh, I think how to get them out from there. Of course, it takes money. Uh, I have some, but it's not enough to make a new life together with a family uh, in a new place. That's first of all. Second, I'm trying to find a job uh, outside of Russia. And now it's a uh, really, really strong <laughs> to find it because <laughs> uh, uh, you Russian, I, I'm a specialist in something and uh, try to find job. And uh, I was rejected by chair because I'm Russian. That was in Europe. That liberal Europe, what uh, Russia hate. <laughs> I was rejected by my uh, place of birth. That's okay. I'm not blaming them. They are right. I am agree with them. I'm agree. But uh, in uh, in that world uh, now, that's a trend to hate Russians. I'm I completely understand that. Completely understand. But for Christians, uh, you don't. Jesus. Uh, for God not see on your face he see he stole your soul who you are what you do so according to my situation I'm trying to find a job outside of Russia because uh, if you work in Russia you support the war by your uh, taxes I don't want to spend money there or something else until situation will change. Maybe I will come back one day because my parents live there, uh, my friends live there. Uh, but it's unsafe place, really unsafe place in the world. Unsafe and unholy place. So that's my uh, situation right now. Well, okay. Okay. And uh, what do you think, how will the war affect the Protestant churches in Russia in the long run? What are the long-term effects? Okay, as I told before, Orthodox Church, that's the main Christian church in uh, Russia. Uh, all Protestant church, they are uh, as a cult. Russian government uh, kicked out Jehovah's Witnesses from the country a couple of years ago. Take all of that buildings, all property without any money. And that's a way of all Russian churches, Protestant churches in Russia. Because uh, who came to preach the gospel in Russia in 19th? Americans. So, even if you're a Baptist church with a hundred years old uh, history, you're still an American church. That's what Russian government think. And it's really, really dangerous to be a Protestant Christian in Russia. So in long ter term, uh, I think they will find the enemy inside of country. Now they already find it enemy outside, really close outside, like Ukrainians. Okay, next one it's uh, Baltic countries, next one Finland country, next one uh, Kazakhstan country, and uh, all of that Baltic, uh, all of that uh, 15 Republic. That's a dangerous place for a Protestant Christian to be in Russia. 
So is it okay? So they see the Protestants or Baptists are Americans. So do you know what they, because there are some Lutheran Finnish people who are Lutherans. There's some Lutheran churches, I guess, in Russia. Is it the same suspicion against them? Do you know? Yeah, sure, sure. Because Lutheran, it's a Baltic or film churches. Uh, the play, place of area of St. Pete, that's uh, in Germanland place. So that's already the guy who charge of Indian Marland uh, in Russia already uh, persecuted. So even Pentecostal church, they're not Russians. So charismatic churches, same way, that's American churches and so on, so on, so on. Not Orthodox, not Russian. That's a simple. Well, thank you so much for sharing uh, these perspectives, Konstantin. Um, how can we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in Russia right now? Uh, first of all, uh, please pray for common sense. Because Russia is like, uh, I don't know how to name it, it's like poison. You, you like have a shelter before your eyes. Even Christian doesn't see uh, that danger. I don't know why. I, I, I know because of propaganda, but uh, I thought we def defended by God from that, but not. But not. Even your friends who was Christian like 20 years or more, uh, even your parents who uh, raised you up as a Christian. That's, that's really strange. And pray please for Christ. Uh, for Christ-centeredness in the life of every believer. Because uh, that's the main thing. Because if we have a Christ in the center, I'm sure we will uh, will understand clearly the situation. And look at that situation through the lens of God. God love, God is love. If something is done out of love, it's not from God. So, and the last word, what I want to say, it's uh, Maranatha. <laughs> Come Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah, yeah. I read the one book that was written God is coming. <laughs> well, thank you, Constantine. Thank you so much for being part of this interview. And uh, may God bless you and your family. And Thank you, Heidi, for that opportunity. Uh, love you, brothers. Love you, sisters. Love you, churches. And uh, see you one day in heaven. <laughs> Kiitos kaikille kuulijoille ja katselijoille. Jälleen kerran palautetta voi lähettää osoitteeseen kujalla.podcast.gmail.com. Ja palataan asiaan ensi kerralla uusin aiheen. Moi moi!